All right. We're going to start conceptual unit 4a and talk about exponential and logarithmic functions. All right, so here we go. Your exponential and logistic functions. Your exponential functions look like this. They look like kind of half of a boomerang. Um, the the um, thing that I think about most often when I think of an exponential function is like how a rumor spreads. A rumor spreads exponentially. We all know how rumors fly. Starts off at the beginning of the day, one person knows something. By the end of the day, the whole freaking school knows it. All right, that is an exponential function. You start off small, only one person knows. By the end of the day, and not just not very much time. A ton of people know. Okay, so that's exponential, an exponential function. When something grows, like the spreading of a rumor, we call that exponential growth, and it goes up, obviously. When you talk about things like um, carbon decaying and things like that, you're talking about it, you know, obviously things coming down, right? Decreasing, decaying, okay? So it says, let a and b be real number constants. An exponential function in x is a function that can be written in the form f of x equals a times b to the x. Now part of your homework is they're going to ask you, is this an exponential function? So you've got to pay attention to this definition. It says a can't be 0. So if they ever try and give you a is 0, it's not an exponential function. b must be positive. You can't have a negative base. And b can't be 1. The constant a, whatever it is, is called the initial value of f, okay, and b is called the base. Now, a couple of things. So how are you going to know when it's growth and when it's decay? If your base is bigger than 1, okay, now remember, your base has to remain positive. So we're not talking about bigger than 1 being positive and less than 1 being negative. We're talking about is it greater than 1? Is it like 1.2 or 5 or 7 or 10? Whatever. Is it bigger than 1? Okay. If it is, then you're going to have a growth function. If b is between 0 and 1, like 1 half or 2 thirds, I don't mean negative because b can't be negative. Okay. But if it's between 0 and 1, meaning pretty much a fraction, then you're going to have a decay model and things are going to go down. What's nice is your functions always go through 0, comma, actually whatever a is. In this case, because mother, mother has a, a, an initial value of 1. So that's really 1 times b to the x, which is why it passes through 0, 1. But if that was a, if that was a 2, then it would pass through 0, 2. And then it always goes through 1, comma, b. Okay? All right. So here we go. Identifying exponential functions. For a, f of x equals 3 to the x. Is it an exponential function or not? Well, the criteria says that a, well, it's an exponential function, sorry, with an initial value of 1. Sorry, that was pretty loud. Um, with initial value of 1 and a base of 3, you're going, why isn't the initial value 3? Remember, your, your function has to be written as a times b to the x. There's got to be something in front of This is the base because it's got the exponent in the air touching it. Whatever is multiplied by that, and if they don't write anything, it's a 1. So this would have an initial value of 1 and a base of 3. Okay? What about b? Is it an exponential function? No. Why? Well, because, remember, b has to be positive and it has to be a number. It can't be a variable. Okay? The base x, in this case, my, ba my initial value would be, if it was an exponential, my initial value would be 6, my base would be x. And you can't have that. Your base has to be numerical. Okay? Your base has to be numerical and your exponent has to be the variable. This isn't even a variable. Okay? This would be what we call a power function. All right, so for C, does it look right? Yes. Okay, it's an exponential function. It has an initial value of negative 2. It has a base of 1.5. Just remember your base is always the guy that's got the exponent attached to it. 
Now, D, everybody's kind of going, mm, I don't know, what, what did she say about negative exponents? Well, I didn't, but it's a trick. What this means is I could actually write this as 7 times 2 to the negative 1 to the x, because wouldn't that still be to the negative x? Yes. Then I can rewrite this as 1 half, because this would move the 2 to the bottom and make its exponent positive. Okay, so that's the trick. When you have negative exponents, you need to rewrite it. Because now I can see that, yes, okay. And by the way, this one would be growth because my base is bigger than 1. This would be growth because my base is bigger than 1. This one's going to be decay because my base is between 0 and 1. In other words, it's a fraction. Anyways, this is an exponential function. It has an initial value of 7 and a base of 1 half. Okay? What about E? It kind of looks like the initial value would be 5 and the base would be 6. And it would be if that wasn't pi up there in the air. Remember, your exponent has to be a variable. Pi is not a variable. Pi is a constant. 3.14, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is not an exponential function because the exponent pi is a constant. It's not a variable. All right. So you do this one. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got it is an exponential function. And remember, the 3 has to be the base because it has its exponent. So whatever is being multiplied by it is its initial value. And if there's nothing there, it's a 1. Okay, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And it is not an exponential function. And the reason is your base has to be a number, your exponent has to be a variable. Okay, this is okay because even though there's a number there, that's going to cause a horizontal shrink. But you, so the, the, vari the exponent is okay, but my base has to be numerical. Okay, try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready, and hopefully you got 3. It is exponential, the base is a number, the exponent is a variable, and the initial value would be whatever is multiplied by it, so there's your initial value, and there's your base. Okay, alright, now computing exponential function values for rational number inputs. All you're doing is changing x to 4. So this would be 2 to the 4th, which would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which would be 16. This would be 2 to the 0, which is 1, because anything to the 0 degree is 1. f of negative 3 would be 2 to the negative 3rd, which means I'd have to move it to the denominator and change its sign. Then evaluate the exponent, and I get 8. So my answer would be 1 8. If I raise it to a... Um, fraction, you have a couple, you need to change it back into a radical, this would be the square root of 2 to the first. Yes? So my answer would be square root 2. This one, you would have 2 to the negative 3 halves, right? If I replaced x with what they told me. Now again, this is that negative 1 trick. This would be 2 to the negative first to the positive 3 halves which would be 1 over 2 to the 3 halves. With me? To simplify that, you've got to do the top and the bottom. That's going to be 1 to the 3 halves, which is just 1. 1 to any degree, fraction, non-fraction, 1 to anything is 1. And on bottom, I have 2 to the 3 halves, which to simplify that, I need to go radical, which is going to be the square root of 2 cubed. square root of 2 cubed. And if I do 2 cubed, that's 8. And if I break down 8, by 2 is 4, by 2 is 2. So I get a pair of 2's, which makes a perfect square, and that one's got to go back in. So my bottom becomes 2 square roots of 2. So my answer is 1 over 2 square roots of 2, except for I can't leave a radical in the denominator. So I'm going to have to multiply by the square root of 2, multiply by the square root of 2, and I get the square root of 2 over 2 times 2. Because the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2. So now I have the square root of 2 over 4. And that would be my solution. Alright?
When you can, well, let me see if you can check it. Well, yes and no. You can, this one doesn't come out pretty because it's got that radical in it, but I could do square to two divided by four and check it. Yeah, I get the same thing. All right. All right, so you do this one. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got number one. So if I change x to two, I have one fifth to the second, which means one squared over five squared, which means one over 25. Go, hit pause, come back when you're ready. Check your answer. And hopefully you got 1 over 125. And if you didn't, let's look at y. So if I change x to 4, I have 5 to the 1 minus 4, which would be 5 to the negative 3, which would be 1 over 5 to the positive 3, which would be 1 over 125. Is it okay? Do this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 3. If not, let's look at y. So I have 3 times 16 to the negative 3 halves. Again, this is going to be 3 times. This could be 16 to the negative first times a positive 3 halves. That would make it 1 over 16 to the 3 halves, which would make it 1 to the 3 halves over 16 to the 3 halves. 1 to anything is 1. 16 to the 3 halves would be the square root of 16 cubed. And if I do 16 cubed, I get 4096. So I'm doing a square root of 4096. I'm going to try it on the calculator. Oh, look, it's perfect. 64. If not, I would have had to, if I got a decimal, then I would have had to break it down and simplify it that way. So that's going to be over 64. And then if I simplify this 3 times 1 over 64, you get 3 over 64. And you can't reduce. And no, you don't, when you multiply, you don't do the top and the bottom. This is like 3 over 1. Straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Okay? So how do you... Evaluate exponential expressions. Well, I guess you plug in the given number that they gave me x's, right? And simplify. Alright, so next we're going to be finding an exponential function from its table of values or from its graph. What you do is you're going to plug in the y-intercept into the function. And the reason you're going to do that is they're going to give you some sort of a y. That's going to be a number. Equals a times b to the 0, because we're going to change x to 0. Anything to the 0 degree is 1. So basically, a equals that y-intercept. Okay, and you can do the math if you want to, but that's what's always going to happen. a is pretty much whatever your y-intercept is. So then you plug that a in, and then you pick any other ordered pair from the table or the graph and plug it in for x and y and solve it for b. Then you'll know a and b, and all you need to write a function is a and b. Okay, so my directions say determine formulas for the exponential functions g and h. So we're doing two different ones. The first time we're going to do g, and then we'll do h, whose values are given in the table. Okay, so remember, basically, to write a function, I need a and I need b. Once I get a and b, I can plug them in and I've got my equation. Well, if you find, step say, find your y-intercept. You get a y-intercept when x is 0. So this is going to be my y-intercept. So I'm going to change x to 0 and y to 4 in my original function. So I would have f of... So, I'm going to use this function, and I'm going to change y to 4. I don't know a, I don't know b, but I'm going to change x to 0. Well, anything to the 0 degree is 1, so a equals 4. 
I'm halfway there. Now I need to get a B. To get a B, it says plug in any other value from the table or the graph. Now I don't want to plug in negatives or fractions. They're nasty. So I am going to plug in this one, which means I'm going to change X to 1, and I'm going to change Y to 12. But now I know A, so I'm going to have 12 equals 4 times B to the first of x is 1. So to get b alone, divide by 4, and I get b equals 3. So now that I know a and b, I can write my function, which would be f of x equals 4 times 3 to the x. This model would, this equation would model that data. Okay? And I just want to prove to you, I could have used it at this point. If I'd have used this point, I'd have said 36 equals 4 times b squared. Then to isolate to kill this one, yeah, you would divide by 4. And I get b squared equals 9. Square root, and I get b equals, if we're just talking the principal amount, b equals 3. I get the same thing. It doesn't matter what ordered pair you plug in. Okay? That's for the um, g function. For the h function... I have to look at these x's and these y's. Okay? And so I'm going to find my x or my y intercept, which is going to be this and this. So my y intercept is 8. So if I plug that in to f of x equals a times b to the x. I'm going to change y to 8 and x to 0. So I have 8 equals a times b to the 0, which is 1, which means a equals 8. Okay, so then I'm going to pick any other ordered pair. Um, again, you can pick whatever you want, but I'm going to pick 1 and 2 because it's going to make math pretty easy. So now I'm going to change in my function, same function, f of x equals a times b to the x. I'm going to change my y to 2. My a was thir 8. My b was 3, sorry. And I don't know my x. Yes? Oh, wait. Oh, I'm looking. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm looking over here. I don't know my B, so that's why I've got to plug in this other pair. So I'm going to plug in 2 for this. Um, my A here is 8. I don't know my B. And my X is 1. Again, because I'm using this X and this Y. So B to the first, I'm going to divide by 8. And B equals, if I reduce, 1 fourth. So this one's going to be decay. And this one's going to be growth. Remember, if B is bigger than 1, it's growth. If it's between 0 and 1, it's decay. Sorry. Alright, so we've got A and B now. So to write my function for this one, I get F of X equals A times B to the X. That would be my function for the H function. Actually, I should say H here. And this one, I should have said G. Sorry, pay attention to what they're naming the functions. Alright, so here we've got a graph. Well, they're still giving me the same information. When x is 0, you have a y-intercept. And the first thing you do is plug in your y-intercept to solve it for a. So if I make x 0 and y 3, I get 3 equals a times b to the 0, which is 1, which means a equals 3. To figure out b, I'm going to plug in this ordered pair. So I have 0 0.1875 equals 3 times b to the second, because they gave me x is 2 and y is 0 0.1875. So now I have to isolate to kill, so I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3. 0 0.1875 divided by 3 is 0 0.0625 equals b squared. Square root 0 0.0625. And I get B equals 0 0.25, which is 1 fourth if you want to go with a fraction. So now that I know A and B, I can write my function. F of X equals 3 times 1 fourth to the X. 
And this should be between 0 and 1 because we have a decay function, not a growth function. Alright, so you try this one. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 2. If you did not, let's look at y. Don't let these fractions bother you. There's my y-intercept. So I'm going to say y equals a times b to the x which is 0, which is 1, so a equals 10 thirds. To find b, i got to plug in any other ordered pair. I don't like these fractions any more than I have to, so I'm going to do this one. Okay, so I would have um, 10 equals 10 thirds times b to the negative first. So I'm going to divide by 10 thirds, divide by 10 thirds, Keep, change, flip, the tens cancel and I get 3 equals b to the negative first. Now, you can't have a negative exponent, so that would be 1 over b to the positive first, yes? So now to solve for b, I need to multiply and I get 3b equals 1, divide by 3, and b equals 1 third. So I know a, I know b, write me a function, f of x equals a times b to the x. Easy breezy. Alright, graphing these guys. Again, you've got to remember that, oh, oh, I'm sorry, the exponential function where you have a base of e. Do not let that base of e freak you out of anything, it makes life easier. E is like pi, and it's approximately 2.71 something, 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 something. Okay, it's just like pi. It goes on forever and ever and ever and doesn't repeat. So all that means when you graph it is it's going to go through 0, 1, and it's going to go through 1 E, mother will. And 1 comma E would be 1 comma 2.71. Okay, so just remember E is approximately 2.71, and you got no problem. Okay, so if I determine the formula, we still are going to do the exact same thing. We're going to plug in our y-intercept. So I have 3 equals a times e to the k times 0. Well, k times 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1, so a equals 3. Then I'm going to plug in my other ordered pair. So I have 3 over e equals 3 times e to the kx, which would be 2 times k times 2, which would be... 2k. Yes? Okay, so I've got to figure out what that k is. So first of all I have to um, isolate Hold on a second. Hold on just a second. Okay, sorry guys, I was trying to figure out, I haven't taught you how to take logarithms or natural logs, so I was a little confused how we were going to solve this, but now I remember. Okay, I don't like this fraction here, so I can move e up if I change the sign of its exponent. So this would be 3e to the negative first equals 3e to the 2k. Now, what you do is I need to isolate an e on one of the sides. So I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3, they cancel out on both sides. So now I have e to the negative 1 equals e to the 2k. Well, there's a theorem that basically says when you claim that two powers are equivalent, in other words, e equals e, so the bases are equivalent, and if I'm claiming these two terms are equivalent, then there's only one way that happens, and that's if negative 1 equals 2k. You can't, they can't be equal and have different amounts. So whatever this is has to be equivalent to whatever this is. So I set them equal to each other and solve, and I get k equals negative 1 half. Okay? So now, if I plug in my a and my k instead of a and my b, I will have my function is 3 times e, sorry, 
to the negative one half x. And that would be my function. All right, you try this one. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got two. If not, let's look at y. Okay, first I plug in my y-intercept. So I'm going to have 1.5 equals ae to the k0. Anything times 0 is 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. So a equals 1.5. Okay, so now to find b, I'm going to plug in the other point they gave me. So I'm going to change y to 3 over 2 equals a, which is 3 over 2, if I write that as a fraction. And you guys don't like fractions, so I guess we could just write them as well, but they're going to have fractions here. Uh, it don't matter. All right, so I have 3e over 2 here, and I have 3 over 2 on this side, um, times e, to I don't know k, but I'm plugging in 2 for my x, which would make it 2k. So again, first thing I'm going to have to do is isolate. So if I divide by 3 halves on both sides, that actually cancels them out on both sides. So I have e to the first equals e to the 2k. And since those have to be equivalent, then 1 has to equal 2k. So k has to equal 1 half. So my function will be my a times my e to the k, which is 1 half x. Yeah? All right. Your transformations. It's pretty much your x is up in the air now. So anything that's happening up in the exponent area is happening to x and everything on the ground is happening to y. If you add or subtract from x you're moving right or left. If there's a negative up there it's going to reflect across y. If there's a negative in front it's going to reflect across x and if you add numbers or subtract numbers that's going to move it up or down. Your a will be your vertical stretch or shrink Okay, and if there's a number touching x in the air, that'll be your horizontal stretch or shrink. Same way when your base is e. The only difference is, is your base is e. All right, so it says two steps to describe the transformation. It says write the equation of the mother function, name the two mother points 0, 1, and 1b. Sketch the mother function. List the transformations and how it affects either x or y. Decide the order they need to be done in. Remember, if you're doing more than one thing to x, it's asthmadep, and if you're doing more than one thing to y, it's PEMDAS. And then sketch your picture. So here we go. Okay, it says graph the function. Well, mother would be 2 to the x. So I keep the same base, and it's just x. That would be mother. And mother is going to pass through 0, 1, because the... Again, if I was doing mother, it's going to pass through 0, 1, and 1, B. So mother would be 0, 1, 1, 2. And there's mother. Okay? We have to do things to these ordered pairs. This and this are going to happen to Y because they're on the ground. This is multiply, this is subtract. If we go PEMDAS order, I have to multiply my Y's by 3 which is going to give me 0, 3, 1, 6. And I have to subtract 4 from the y. So minus 4, minus 4, 0, negative 1, 1, 2. So those two things are done. On top, I have to, they're saying multiply by a negative 2, which means I'm going to divide by negative 2. That's going to give me 0, negative 1, and that's going to give me negative 1 half 2. So all my transformations are done. So if I replot those points, 0, negative 1, and negative 1 half 2, this thing is going to turn into decay. Yes. Okay, so if we describe our transformations, that 3 was a vertical stretch. The minus 4 was a shift down. This negative up here reflected over y. 
So see mother, oops. Oops. So see how mother was this way? She turned around because she reflected over Y. Okay, so that's why she looks turned into decay. And then the two is going to be a horizontal shrink. Because remember, it's with your crazy X, and that makes it backwards. And there you go. That's all there is to it. All right. I animated all this out. All right, so it says graph this function. Mother would be e to the x, which passes through 0, 1, and 1, comma e, which is about 2.7. So here's mother, 0, 1, 1, comma, 2.7. There's e to the x, mother. Okay, we have to do these transformations to this. So we've got two things outside, multiply and add. we got to multiply first. I'm going to multiply by negative 2, and that gives me 0, negative 2, 1, comma, 5.4. Then I need to subtract 1 from the y's. So I have 0, negative 3, 1, 4.4. When those two things are done, and up top for x, all they want me to do is subtract 2 from the x's, which means I'm going to add 2 to my x's. That's going to give me 2, negative 3, and 3, comma, 4.4. So if I plot those, 2, negative 3, and 3, 4.4. And if I connect those, all right, so to describe my transformations, that negative on the outside is going to reflect over x. Oh, shoot, this was negative. It's like this, that didn't reflect over x, so should, things should be upside down. Oh, Tamsin, pay attention. This should be negative 5.4 which would make this negative 6.4, which makes that negative 6.4. So we go to 3, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.4, and 2, negative 3. There we go. Now we turned around. Okay? So that was my reflect over x. My 2 is going to be a vertical stretch. My minus 2 on top is going to move it right to, and the plus 1, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry you guys, I must be really tired. Let me start over. Mother would be e to the x, which passes through 0, 1. 1 comma 2.7. 0, 1, 1, 2.7. There's e to the x. Okay, so we have these ordered pairs. 0, 1, 1 comma 2.7. I got to do these transformations. We've got to multiply and add, and I don't know why I switched and subtracted. So I'm going to multiply first by negative 2. I get 0, negative 2. 1, negative 5.4. Screwed that up last time. I said it was positive. Okay, so I did that. Then we're going to add 1 instead of subtracting 1. Tamsin. That's going to be 0, negative 1. That's going to be 1, negative 4.4. Those two are done. So now I have to add 2 to my x's. And that's going to give me 2, negative 1. 3, negative 4.4. Let's try that again. 2, negative 1. 3, negative 1, 2, 3, 4.4. So it's going to come down like this. Yeah? And it did. Look, why is it upside down?
Okay. Alrighty. Sorry, I forgot I haven't made it all day. Yeah, I was right. Huh. Oh, it went, yeah, I was like, why? It should be backwards. I'm sorry. It should turn just upside down, and I was going backwards. Be careful. I knew it didn't look right for some reason. That's how I connected the dots. All right, so if we graph this one, mother would be y equals 0.5 to the x. So this would pass through, I don't know why I got y there. This would pass through 0, 1, because 1 would be touching it, and 1, 0.5. So 0, 1, 1, comma, 0.5, and since my base is a fraction, it's going to be decay. So my ordered pairs are 0, 1, and 1, 0.5. And if I do my transformations, this says multiply the y's by a negative 2. That gives me 0, negative 2, 1, comma, uh, my negative 1. That's done. Then up top, they want me to add 3 to x, so I'm going to minus 3 from x. And I got negative 3, negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, and I did that. So if I plot those, negative 3, negative 2, negative 2, negative 1. Before I graph it, let's describe our transformation. The negative is going to reflect over x. So this thing should turn upside down. And I don't know why I have such a hard time drawing these things. It should turn upside down. And the plus 3 should move it left 3. Yeah? So I did go left 3. And I flip upside down, which should look like this, I think. Let's see. Oh, I didn't animate it. Okay. So let's try another one. All right. Mother would be e to the x, which passes through 0, 1, and 1, 2.7. 2.7. This is exponential with base e. All right. Let's do the math. We got these ordered pairs. They want me to multiply the y's by negative 3. That's going to give me 0, negative 3, 1, negative 8.1. So I did that. Then they want me to minus 2 from the y's. Minus 2, minus 2, 0, negative 5, 1, um, negative 8.1 minus 2 is negative 10.1. That's done. And then up top it says add 2 to my exit. So plus 2 plus 2. 2 negative 5. 3 negative 10.1. So 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. 3 negative 10.1. Now let's see what the let's see the negative is going to reflect over x. The three is going to be a vertical stretch. The minus two on the end is going to move it down two, and the minus two in the air is going to move it right two. So I know this thing has to turn upside down. So it's going to pass through these points upside down. Okay. All right, mother again would be 0.5 to the x, which means it passes through 0, 1, and 1, 0.5. 1, 1,5, which means it's decay because my base is between 0 and 1. So if I take my ordered pairs 
And let's see, I'm going to do my outside things first. So multiply, then add. I'm going to multiply my y's by 2. And I get 0, 2, zero uh, 1, 1. That's done. So now I'm going to add 1 to the y's. I get 0, 3, 1, 2. That's done. Now they're saying divide, or they're saying multiply x by 3, but that means I'm going to divide by 3, which gives me 0, 3, and 1, third, 2. Yes? So if I plot those, 0, 3, 1, third, 2. And there was no flipping, so it's going to do the same shape. All right, you try this one. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. And guys, on multiple choice questions, if you're matching graphs, don't do all the algebra. Mother would be 2 to the x, so mother would pass through 0, 1, and 2, 1. I mean, and 1, 2. Okay, so they would be mother exponential function. This says I'm going to go 5 down and 1 um, to the right. So I need to go 5 down and 1 to the right. 5 down, 1 to the right. 5 down, 1 to the right. 5 down, 1 to the right. Hmm. All right there. Five to, no, that's five. One, two, three, four, five down, one to the right. No. 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 Oh my goodness. It's gonna move right one and down five. Oh, oh, Tamsin, you're so dumb. Five down, remember, original started at one. I'm so silly. Okay, so if it was right here, see how it crosses at one? If I go five down, one, two, three, four, five over one. There you go. It's got to pass through that point. And I knew this was the right words. It moved left one and down five. And this is the only one that has even the right description. All right. What? Oh, shoot. Sorry. We're moving right one and down five. Sorry, it's one. Wow, I'm screwing this lesson up today, aren't I? All right, try again. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got four. All right, this 4 is going to move it up 4. This negative is going to reflect over x. This negative is going to reflect over y. And this is going to be a horizontal uh, stretch. This is less than 1. Remember, anything with crazy x is backwards. Okay, so we want to move up. Four. So they all have it. Reflect over x. Yep. No. Nope. Yep. Yep. Reflect over y. No. That one's already out. So those two. So now we're down to those two. It's got to go up four. Well, this is the only one that went up. Okay. Zero, one, one, two, three, four. Um, so it goes up four, yeah. Well, these two are the same. Anyway, this is the only one that's moved up because this one's clearly moved down. So that would be my solution. Try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got three. Again, this is going to be mother would be f of x equals or h of x equals mother of x would equal 
The following student please report to the discipline office, Alyssa Navarro. Christopher Velasquez Santos. Fiona Ramirez Mojia. All right, so if we try this one, mother would be 4 to the x, which means she would pass through 0, 1, and 1, 4. This is going to reflect it upside down, so it would do this. Now it's going to do this, and it's going to go left 3. Kevin Maddie, please come to the clinic. Kevin Maddie, please come to the clinic. Left 3, reflect over x. Left 3, reflect over X. Left 3, reflect over X. Right, right, out. Well, this one says left, but it actually moved right. So he's out, so it's got to be 3. All right. All right, so how do you graph exponential functions? You get your mother points, which will always be 0, 1, and 1B. Actually, 0, A, and 1. And then you perform your transformations. And then graph. All right. So we are at homework, which means we are done. Happy homeworking, and I will see you next time.